Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Tips and Tricks Volume 2. I'm Mark Absalon and in this video, I know a lot of you guys own the QO1000 variable lights and they have a fan on them. And I've got several emails from people saying, how do you disconnect the fan? Because what I'm shooting, Mark, I need total absolute silence. Well, what I'm gonna do in this video is show you guys how to install a professional switch to turn those fans off and on. Now, before we get started, let me tell you, this is going to void your manufacturer warranty on your QL1000 lights. So do not attempt this if you do not want your warranty void. This video is for informational purposes only, so use this at your own risk. Well, let's get started and let me tell you what you'll actually need to do this to your light kit. Now let's talk about some of the things you're gonna to need to actually create this switch on your light kit. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers, a soldering iron, 24 to 22 gauge wiring, preferably the braided type that you can buy instead of the actual solid type, a rotary drill, a rocker arm switch, tie downs, shrink wrap tubes that go over the wiring, wire strippers, wire cutters, an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, Phillips nose screwdriver, soldering wire, a paper mask, and there actually might be a few other little knickknacks that you'll need to throw in to kind of make this work for your light kit. Now that we've gotten all of our supplies that we're going to need to actually do this little adjustment to our lights, you want to take the lamp, remove the power cord, and remove the light bulb. And if you still have the little plastic container that originally came on the top, let's put that in place too. That way, if you're moving this around as you're actually manipulating the bag to, to put in the light switch, you wanna actually damage where the light bulb goes into. Now the next step you wanna do is remove the four screws from the back part of the housing. There are gonna be two screws on the side and two screws on the top. One of the screws is actually in the handle housing, so you'll remove those with a Phillips nose screwdriver. Once you have the four screws removed, put them away in a safe place so you won't lose them, and slowly remove the back part of the lamp housing. Now, you're gonna notice it doesn't come out all the way. Now, the way to actually make it come out all the way is we have to remove a connector. This connector will be located on the left bottom head side of the unit itself on the back part of the housing. You'll take a pair of needle nose pliers and slowly and carefully remove that connector from the board. Once you have that removed, you'll be able to remove the housing a little bit further to actually work on it more. The second thing we want to do is remove the screws from the board on the back part of the housing we just took off. We'll remove three screws so that the board is actually independent from the back housing so that we can work on it a little easier to put in our switch. Once we have those screws removed, put those away in a safe place too because we're gonna have to reassemble the whole unit after we finish our modification. You'll notice on the very bottom of the unit on the back, there is a hole next to the other three switches, the fuse and also the variable control. The hole is actually located right underneath where the power switch is on the back part of the housing. You can take an X-Acto knife and remove that area very carefully. Now, you'll notice it's a pretty small hole, but for our switch, we're gonna have to make it a lot larger. If you actually have a snap-in switch, you can probably just remove that part and snap that in and move on to the next steps. But what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to use a Dremel or a drill to go in and remove that part of the housing a little bit more so we can have our switch easily fit inside the unit. Always remember when you're actually using a rotary tool to make the hole larger to use your mask. Now since we've got our hole evenly fit so we can slide our switch in and out of the back part of the housing pretty easily, we'll remove it entirely. Now we'll cut two pieces that are five inches long of red 22 or 24 gauge wire and we'll strip both ends of that. Now strip it down kind of to your preference on that. It doesn't, you don't want it too long and you don't want it too short. We'll take one end, we'll uh, actually thread it through part of the switch and wrap it around. And we'll do this on both end parts of the switch on the back part of it. Next, we'll take our soldering iron. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. You'll want to use your soldering iron in a well-ventilated area. 
because solder can actually cause headaches and all kinds of other problems. So if you're doing this, make sure you do it in a well ventilated area with your soldering gun. Now, we take our soldering gun and we'll wanna solder the two pieces that we've attached to the back end of the switch so that there's a nice, good weld on the back. Now we wanna take some of our shrink wrap material and run that down to the actual uh, connectors that we had soldered earlier on the switch itself. And we'll take our heating iron and slowly rub that over the shrink wrap and it'll actually adhese and create a, uh, an insulated uh, in, in insulation actually for the switch and our actual solder that we put on it. Well, we have our piece soldered. You wanna take the soldered uh, switch, the rocker arm, and place it in the back of the housing and take the, the uh, screw on cap and screw that so that it actually fits flush to the back of the housing and make sure it's straight before you tighten it too tight. Now we wanna focus on the actual fan connector wire that we unplugged earlier. We go in with our wire cutters and we'll cut that wire, but we don't wanna cut it too close to the white connector that goes into the board. We wanna leave at least a half an inch on that. So you might wanna actually kind of take the wires apart a little bit, but we'll connect, we'll actually cut the red wire. Don't cut the black wire, leave the black wire alone. Once the red wire is cut, then we wanna take our wire stripper or our X-Acto knife, which you might have to use an X-Acto knife because it's, it's kind of deep inside the actual housing of the light. And we want to strip both of those red wires. We don't want to strip too much, but we want to strip enough. Now we take one of our lead ends and we'll take one of our shrink wrap pieces and put that over the wire and kind of move that as far back away from where we're going to connect the fan wire to the actual switch wire. We'll mesh the two wires together and solder that wire to actually make a good connection. Now you'll also do this with the other wire too. And once they're soldered, then you bring the actual shrink wrap over on top of that and use your soldering iron again, the base of it where it's not as hot on the tip, to actually shrink wrap that so we have an insulated connection. All that's left to do now is to reassemble what we actually took apart. We'll reassemble the board and then take our white connector and plug it back into the board for the fan. And we'll bring the housing back a little bit closer to the actual housing. And you'll wanna take your two, your red wires that you've actually connected, bring them out and use one of the zip ties to zip tie them together and kind of shove that underneath the board because we don't want any wiring actually hitting our fan that is in the housing unit. And finally, we reassemble our screws back into the housing uh, back into the actual housing unit and you might want to do a test run right now and plug the plug in and turn it on and make sure that it's actually working properly. Um, if you don't want to solder this you can always use connector butts like uh, phone connectors they work well or you can actually get a connector that will slip onto the switch too and forego the soldering. Well guys we've done this we've installed the switch but there's one thing one thing that I need to tell you about these lights. The lights have a thermostat. What does that mean? Well, when they hit 90 degrees Celsius, the light will actually go out. It's something they've installed in the lights and the fan's supposed to cool it down. So if you're working with it and you've got your fan off for let's say about 10 minutes and your light goes out, don't panic. Just go turn the fan on and in about 60 seconds or so your lights will come back on. So it's a little thing that happens with the lights, but to get that other silence that you need for your video or your film or your short film or whatever you're shooting, it's a little bit of a sacrifice, but I think I can live with it. And I know you probably can too. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Tips and Tricks by Mark Absalon for video production. In this video, we've covered a lot. We've talked about how to install a switch in your QL1000 lights to turn off your fan. If you'd like to learn more about video production, go over to my website, markapsalon.com. I've got a ton of training videos over there. All new stuff, all new material. It's never been online, so you guys need to go check it out. It'll help your videos out. So go check out my website, markapsalon.com. Guys, it's hot, studio's hot, these lights everywhere just beaming down on you, making me have this wonderful tan. I kinda like it here. But anyway guys, 
You have a great evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you are. I'm Mark Absalon, and I am out of here.